Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to continue to talk about the global minimum variance. From the first screencast, you may remember that we had set up our Lagrangian function. We had given it a name y and it contained three items. This item was our objective function, the portfolio variance that we wanted to minimize. And these two items along with the Lagrangian multipliers gave us our constraint functions. Now we are going to expand this y function for a two security portfolio. So what I have inside the bracket here in this step here is uh, I have expanded the portfolio variance formula this one here for a two security portfolio. And in this bracket here what I have done is I have written down the lambda 1 as it is from here and then I have expanded this uh, function here by allowing i to become 1 first so that this term is x1 times e1 and then when i becomes 2 I get another term x2 times e2 and after that I copy and paste this minus d as it is. Inside the bracket with the lambda 2 I am allowing the i to become 1 so I get an x1 and then when I allow the i to become 2 I get an x2 and then I copy down this minus 1 as it is. After that what we are doing is we are taking partial derivatives of uh, the y function with respect to x1 first then with respect to x2 then with respect to lambda 1 and then with respect to lambda 2. So when we take a partial uh, derivative of uh, the y function with respect to x1 this is what we are going to get. From this term we have an x1 here we get a 2 times x1 times variance of 1 that we have written down here. Then we have an x1 here when we differentiate we are going to get 2 times x2 times covariance between 1 and 2 that is what is written here. Then in this term we have an x1 here and when we differentiate we are going to get lambda 1 times e1 which is this and when we differentiate uh, with respect to x1 here we are going to get lambda 2 which I have here and then I have set it equal to 0. Likewise I have also differentiated the uh, y function with respect to x2 then with respect to lambda 1 and then with respect to lambda 2 and set all of them equal to 0. Now this if you observe gives me a system of linear um, equations um, which I can then solve to find out my portfolio weights. Uh, what I am going to do next is I am going to represent this system of linear equations in matrix format. In order to find my weights I need to solve for this weight vector. I want to find out the values of x1 and x2. So what I observe here is that I am taking a product between c and x and that is yielding this column vector k. So that is what I write here c times x is equal to k and what I want to do is I want to get rid of this c here. So what I do is that I multiply this left hand side by c inverse. I am writing here c inverse times c times x. Since I am multiplying the left hand side by c inverse I am also required to do the same thing on the right hand side which I do promptly and then I am going to realize that c inverse times c matrix is going to uh, give me an identity matrix that is represented by this letter i here and after that I have this x which is this one here and on the right hand side nothing changes. So an identity matrix times x matrix is going to leave me with the x uh, vector alone. So x is going to be equal to simply c inverse times the k vector. Uh, so what you observe is that this uh, calculation is going to give us the values of weights in terms of d in the form of following two equations. x1 is going to be a plus b1 times d and x2 is going to be a plus b2 times d where a and b are going to be our constants that will be uh, the, the output is going to be uh, given to us when we put in some numbers and solve. So what is going to happen is that we can vary this d to whatever level we want d is our desired return we can have we can want to have um, a 5 percent rate of return or 10 percent rate of return or 2 percent rate of return or whatever whatever value we input for the desired rate of return we are going to get the corresponding x1 and x2 which are portfolio weights and these weights are going to be uh, giving to us the minimum possible variance uh, for the portfolio and by varying the d we can generate a data set for us which we can then plot graphically to give us the efficient frontier 
and the leftmost point of the efficient frontier would give us the global minimum variance. In the next screencast, my friends, we are going to take up some numerical data and see how we can derive the uh, global minimum variance and then we are going to plot an efficient frontier out of it for now. It's goodbye. Thank you very much.